Okay, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at PostMarket OS running Fosh on the PinePhone Braveheart Edition. So this is a fresh uh, install, so we'll see if there's any setup, and we'll just kind of go through the default apps and try them out. I'm going to turn off this light to see if that helps with seeing the screen better. You know, with the lights turned off, I do notice a bit of light bleed coming from the display on the Pine Phone. I didn't really notice that before, but it's no big deal. All right, so it looks like there's not really any setup process involved here with the Pine Phone. It just kind of puts you right into the, or sorry, with Flash, just kind of puts you right into the uh, display here. So let's try out some of the apps that come with it. Looks like uh, the first one here is um, Dialer app. go. So um, it's very similar in feel to a lot of the GNOME 3 apps. Uh, from my understanding, a lot of these are kind of forks of the GNOME apps. So this is, you know, just kind of your standard dialer app. Let's see. I guess you use this to get back to the main screen, and then if you wanted to close it, you just hit the X. And then let's take a look at chats. So we can, oops. doesn't look like we can create a new chat, probably because we don't have any accounts that we could use with that. Let's check out the preferences. <clears throat> Add a new account. So it supports Jabber. If you use Jabber, uh, that's good. Uh, read receipts and typing notifications. Looks like you can uh, use those Jabber extensions, I would assume. Um, indicate offline contacts. So that's uh, on Jabber, you know, you have like your, your different statuses, you know, online or like away or do not disturb and stuff. So that would indicate that. And also for idle and uh, I guess unknown contacts being the ones that you don't have like in your address book. And then you can also um, convert, I don't know if this is converting uh, UT uh, Unicode um, modicons to ASCII or the other way around, but that's an option. You can also have the return key sent messages. Uh, let's see, how do we get out of here? <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so it looks like it's opened up two chat windows here. One of these is probably the preferences. Uh, maybe it was that one, yeah. So um, that's kind of a, a bit of a bug, right? Ideally, you wouldn't want to have to get out of the app just to leave the preferences. Let's see, is there anything else here? About chats. Just tells you, you know, some credits and stuff. Definitely, you know, very much kind of that GNOME application feel to it. Again, it opened up a new window for that. Oops. Close out of that. Uh, we'll try the web browser. I believe this is Epiphany. Some, some variation of it at least about web web yes uh, gnome web which is epiphany you can see the credits there uh, close okay so um 
I don't have any, I guess actually I can, I can connect to Wi-Fi, or at least try to connect to Wi-Fi on this. Let's see if we can get that to work, maybe. Uh, settings? Alright, here. Huh. Kyle's Galaxy, Kyle's iPhone. Uh, this one is mine. I don't know who's Kyle, Kyle's iPhone is. And I set, uh, the password on this to Pine Phone. Yes. Let's see if it can connect to Wi-Fi. Looks like it is connected. Um, sure. I don't know what that is, but I will assume it's important. Uh-oh. Um, I'm just gonna close out of that and hopefully it isn't that important. So, uh, let's, let's try going to a website. Uh, we'll go to my website, maybe. <clears throat> so DuckDuckGo is the default search engine, which is a good choice. Let's see if it will load or not. Uh, while this is loading, let's see, it looks like you have, you can open up a new window, it has uh, incognito uh, windows, you can uh, do your history, import and export bookmarks, uh, you can install site as a web application, which I assume would just create like an icon on your home screen, maybe we'll try that. Uh, open application manager, that's, uh, I wonder what that is, let's give that a shot about applications. Maybe this is where you'd manage your like uh, web apps that you install, which is, you know, on a device like this, that's, web apps are kind of a big deal. Like if you want to use like Uber or, um, you know, maybe your bank's website or whatever, that's going to be through a web app, right? Because they probably, Uber is very unlikely to create an app for Linux anytime soon. All right, that doesn't seem to be doing anything though. Well, uh, let's just take a look at the preferences. Okay, um, it's kind of off screen here. There's not much I can do, but um, I would assume, you know, these are probably the same preferences you would see on the desktop version of GNOME Web. You can change your search engine change like the default download folder and stuff. So uh, it won't bother with that too much. Um, I don't know what's going on with loading DuckDuckGo here. It doesn't look like it's working. So maybe that's a bit buggy yet. Let's take a look at the contacts app. Okay. Uh, we'll just use the local Local address book, there's no, um, a lot of these apps I've noticed, I'm noticing are kind of, they're just a bit cut off, um, is the problem. Well, anyway, I would assume this is very similar to GNOME contacts, so it's just kind of, you can connect it to like, uh, Google or Nextcloud or a uh, card to have server. So next we have Authenticator, which I assume is a two-factor authentication app. Yes, so you can scan a QR code. 
Let's see, you can choose an icon, maybe. I don't know what that did, it's just a white screen. Okay, well, let's see if we can close that. Maybe that's not working yet. Um, but you can select the provider, maybe. Oh, that crashed the app. Okay, well, um, I'm not really sure what that would do. Maybe that would change the icon or something to one of a, a select few. And then you could name it and uh, put in your, your two-factor token private key thing. And uh, presumably you can also scan the QR code. Let's see what else we have. Uh, backup and restore from uh, JSON file. Uh, preferences. Oops, I hit donate. Preferences. Now the donate button works. It opens it up in a, in a browser. Let's, so, preferences you can use dark theme, which is cool. And uh, this preferences window actually works, unlike the other one um, that we tried before. This one actually has a little back button you can use. And then night light, what is that? Oh, that automatically enables dark mode at night, which is it's a cool feature to have. So we'll close out of that. Calculator. I assume this is just GNOME calculator, but for whatever reason it has both the calculator keyboard and the default keyboard, which we'll close maybe if we can. Yep. And then we can just go through and do like two times two here. Oops. Um, you can change the mode by going up here, get some more advanced stuff. Although it's not all accessible and uh, seems like it kind of breaks things. Oh, here we go. Let's see what preferences we have. Uh, you can change the number format, number of decimals, trailing zeros, thousand separators, so put commas in there. Uh, change between degrees and radians. Change the word size. I'm not sure what that means exactly. And um, exchange rate refresh interval. So presumably it goes out to the internet and grabs exchange rates for like currencies or something. So next one we have Cheese, which is a camera app. You can get on the desktop as well. Uh, it says no device found. I'm assuming the camera is not working in post market OS either. <clears throat> uh, again, I believe you can get this working on the command line. It's just not implemented in the apps yet. So, not much to do there, but this is probably pretty standard cheese if you're familiar with that on the desktop. We have Firefox. Can try that out, see if maybe that will work better than the GNOME Web app. Let's see. So you got. Okay, we'll have to use the scroll bar, maybe. Yeah. Doesn't look like uh, you can scroll with your just finger swiping. Hmm. Eh, can we can we go anywhere? Ooh. Hmm. Preferences. Yeah. Basically, it's uh, the desktop version of Firefox, just squished down a bit. Not a particularly great experience. I would probably use GNOME Web if I were using this. At least until Firefox gets a bit more optimized. Uh, I'll skip over Firefox and iBus preferences. And we'll look at Maps. This is GNOME 
maps based on, uh, I believe, they use Mapbox, which uses OpenStreetMaps. Although, oh, here we go. Oh, so there's a little dot uh, where I am. I'm in Massachusetts right now. Let's see. How accurate. Yeah, it's got us in Massachusetts. Amherst, yep, that is the town I am in. So this must mean that either the GPS is working or it's connected to like Mozilla's Wi-Fi localization service or something and it's doing it that way. Let's see. Mm, it's not quite right. It says I'm down here by this road. In actuality, I'm kind of over here. Um, but it's close enough. Let's try uh, maybe typing something. Let's say, uh, I don't know, target. Target, none of these are really close to me, but we'll just select one. Can we get directions? Um, looks like the directions dialog is off the screen, I can't use it. But, uh, you know what, actually the Maps app right now, it's not too bad. I mean, it's a little bit, um, need a little bit, you know, it's like off the screen a bit, but it works, uh, for the most part. Oh, oh, there you go, there you go, it's plotted the directions, more or less. Um, seems to have us going over... The Great Lakes to get to this target, which is a bit weird. Not sure what that is about. Maybe a boat ride or something. Anyway, um, so that's that's cool. It'd be nice if it detected, you know, like closer targets. I'd rather not go that trip just to shop, but whatever. Uh, what else we got? Podcasts. I assume this is the GNOME Podcasts app. We can add a show, add an RSS feed, uh, import shows, and just a white screen, but I assume that would open the file select dialog, and you could get like a, uh, what's it, like OPL M file or whatever. Develop podcasts. Yeah. So just basically GNOME podcasts. Settings, let's check that out. So here's the Wi Fi details about no three point thirty four pine phone two gigabytes of RAM post market OS. What's the date and time? Oh, actually, that's cool. It's uh, it's got the right date, wrong time zone, but the right date, which is um, yesterday I was trying out UB ports Ubuntu Touch, and that was an issue they were having. You, it was basically stuck at uh, you know January first, nineteen seventy Unix Unix uh, epoch, but this is uh, good. Got the date working there. And change the background maybe. I won't try that since things with the file manager haven't been working super great. Online accounts. You can sign into Google, Nextcloud, Facebook, Microsoft. 
privacy, change location services, screen lock, camera, microphone, trash, sharing, applications, So it looks like it's it's mostly just kind of your standard, like GNOME. I don't hear anything out of the uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, can't seem to get the speakers working just right now. Anyway, um, so I'm, I won't go through it all, but it looks like it's mostly just kind of your standard GNOME settings. Sound recorder. This is a just a recording app. Test, test. Can't tell if it recorded anything or not. It's kind of off the, off the side of the screen, so not much I can do here. Taquin. It's a game, I assume. Yes, it's like a puzzle game. How does this work? Ah, like that. Where you move the pieces around to build the cat. It's going to take forever. Uh, that nice little game. Good that it comes with that. And terminal. This is the GNOME terminal, I would assume. Oops. Uh, about. Terminal King's Cross. Oh, maybe it's not GNOME terminal. I don't know. I can't tell. But, uh, you know, you can, uh, ls, and, like, top, see the processes, so, you know, whatever you can do on, uh, regular Alpine Linux, which is what post-market OS is based on, you can do here. Vim, uh, Vim, I'm not sure why you would want that on a phone, to be honest with you, but it's here, for those of you who like Vim. If it will open. Oh, not sure about that. Okay, um, anything else? Looks like that's pretty much it. They have some quick toggles here. But I think we went through all the apps, and I don't know what else is here in this operating system. I think that's, that's pretty much the whole thing. So uh, I guess we'll just shut it down here and call it a video. Oh, it has a nice little fade out. Turn, turn the light back on. If it wants to turn itself off here. Oh, there we go. So that was Fosh on Postmarker OS on the PinePhone Braveheart Edition. If you like the video, uh, give it a like. And uh, I think this is where I'll end it.